Alright, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a tutorial on how to do the new fusion reactor. This is the newest FTB ultimate pack out, and I just actually got it started today. Um, as you can see here, the plasma, I will actually uh, flip it on here quick and you'll see these lights come on, and that is it working. I think maybe they could have done something in the middle, I think would have been a little nicer. There's really no animation aside from the helium plasma coming out and these lights on. So that's how you know it's operating. Anyway, um, getting started. Um, I guess we'll come down here to the fusion coils. There's a few blocks you're going to need. The fusion coils, everything is really costly. So you got your energy flow circuits, the nichrome heating coils, highly advanced machine blocks, superconductors, and an iridium neutron reflector. That gives you fusion coils, you're going to need a few of those. And same with advanced machine casing. The chrome plates, highly advanced and data control circuit. And uh, this is the control, the uh, fusion control. The orbs, the uh, Greg Tech computer and a fusion coil. And then the uh, injector I believe it is, yep, the fusion energy injector, superconductor again, energy flow and a super condensator and then the uh, material injector are pumps with a chest, highly advanced machine block and energy flows and the next one's really funny because it's like an exact symmetrical replica of this one except backwards. They so got the chest down here, the pumps, the energy flow and the highly advanced machine block to make the material extractor. So, anyway, um, once you have those blocks made, you can look on the wiki. It shows you this exact pattern. I'm just going to show you in-game so maybe you can understand a little bit more. So your first ring is going to look like this. You're going to have two material injectors. It doesn't matter which way you face these. They face only one way when laying, so it makes them kind of nice, obviously, so you can get the look of these on the outside. And then you just do a 3-2-1 uh, pattern. See, from each side you got 3-2-1 three two one kind of a circle and then the second one all I did was I took fusion coils and I put them over top this exact layout and then you put one on the inside so actually uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here quick before you're like what got uh, fusion coils and more advanced casing so all you would have to do then is bring this around like this all the way around and then put uh, casing on this side of it and you would come over and put it on this side as well which will give you this exact pattern here and I did that all the way around before I actually chiseled out so I had this right like this right and then I ended up going and just punching these out and putting the energy injectors in here after that's what these are you can't see them but this is where you're gonna power your uh, fusion reactor from because it is gonna take a per tick and a certain amount to start up the setup takes a 40 million startup, and I use, um, you'll see it over there, tri uh, tritium H3 and uh, deuterium H3 as well. So anyway, once you get those uh, energy injectors in each of the four corners, that's going to be the back of the fusion reactor, by the way. Then up here you got material extractor and um, another material extractor, so you got four of them, and then the control. So remember, this will usually be one block up, because this is Y on the second axis from where you are. I mean, if you want to build it in the ground like this with that first row underneath, sure. And then on the third row, going on top of this, is going to be just this exact um, ring again. Same, uh, in same uh, material injectors and uh, this exact pattern. So then it's going to make up... Um, exactly what you see here minus my extra blocks I've added on. So now, um, I like using liquid tesseracts for moving it. I like to kind of keep this a little bit cleaner rather than having a whole bunch of liquid ducts and pumps and stuff like that coming in, but I mean whatever you want to use. I have some uh, quantum tanks over here. I just filled them up previously. This is the uh, gaseous tritium. So it's just I put tritium cells in here until it filled it up a lot while I was testing. And then, uh, same thing here, the liquid amount, and this is the gaseous detrium, which is, again, I put cells in there and it just ate it up. Then I got the uh, liquid ducts on here, 
I got it wrenched for the output with the lever on there going into a liquid tesseract. Liquid tesseracts are limited by the amount of liquid that can go in one face, so I decided to choose a few faces for this in case this actually ate it up, but now I know that it takes barely anything. You'd be fine on one side. So I got uh, the atrium. I got it to send, and it's on number two. And obviously here, I got tritium, send only, and it's on one. So that's going to be sending. Now what the important thing is, is everyone's worried about explosions with these these new react or these new um, fusion reactors there's one way to um, to explode them and there's like no way else I could find I tried every everything I could to blow this sucker up and there's just and to be honest with you it's not that big some people are telling me oh it's four nukes five nukes it's maybe half a nuke it's like four TNT in a square like barely dip it I don't even think the whole thing made it this low and maybe like two radius around it. It was it was pathetic compared to what I had heard. Anyway, probably a good thing. Now, like I was talking with the explosion, is at the Y axis, so the bottom ring has to be the same chemical. Because two of these blocks need tritium and two of the other chemical, right? So all you gotta remember is put all tritium on one block and all deuterium on the other block, not going he not doing the deuterium and tritium and deuterium and tritium. That would explode it. And like I said, it's not much. So I got uh, tritium coming in here. I just slapped one on the bottom here because obviously I fill in the floor and then you don't see this. So this is on tritium. It's on receive. And same with this one, tritium on receive. So we've got, that's what it holds, 10,000 in each. And then um, I close that up so I don't see it. I'm going to leave it for the video. And then same thing right up here on these guys. Uh, bringing in the other one with receive. And the other one as well. Same thing. 10k again up here. And um, on a further video, maybe I'll do it. I did end up doing one you can feed cells into this. But it takes a lot more piping. Like say a liquid. I could have a uh, item tesseract up there instead of a liquid and it would be putting 64 cells in at a time. And then 10 would come out and it'd give you the 10 empty cells. So not only would you have to have something up there, then either on this side or this side, or even inside here, you'd have to have another pipe actually bringing the cells out. So I think either um, use a liquid transposer and then feeding like a liquid transposer with a uh, liquid with the liquid tesseract and then going into this and putting cells in or these new quantum tanks here um, hold two billion yeah they w single block pretty hard to make they take a like really really mad heavy but they hold two billion liquids so and that's of one kind so I'm at not even a million here I'm gonna hold two billion I have um, in my ME system on a server an export hook up right in the top there and it just shoves every tritium cell I get into here so then it fills up my quantum tank and I mean I'm at a measly 2.8 million right now that's a lot but out of 2 billion not a whole lot so I just skip the whole liquid transposer and same with the cells I don't even want a huge setup where I'm pulling and pushing and pulling and pushing where I have to worry about it just constant liquid flow I found to be the best and uh, anyway that brings us over here. Um, I guess I showed you that step first. I just trailed myself onto it. I decided to do this first since it's what's going to show you if you've built your setup correctly. These are interdimensional energy storage units with the outputs facing into these. So then I have uh, two more of them down over here again and they're facing into those. And then this is what's keeping them charged. I just made it uh, nice and symmetrical. Same thing on both sides. The wiring's up underneath and that keeps those charged and when you see when you've hooked the power up and stuff like that you can come over here and click on this and if you've seen this bar starting to move up this is 40 mil for this setup so I mean maybe you've just hooked it up depending on how much power you have it might be going but as long as you see this blue bar coming up then you know you've built this correctly and it's really cool here if you hit uh, recipes under NEI it can tell you information about uh, so the starting of this machine will take 40 million EU, which is the deuterium and tritium. I decided to do that one as my first go. It's going to take 4,000 EU a tick, and over and over 128 ticks, you're going to put that amount in. So you're putting in half a million EU, but this gives 
um, the helium plasma out, which is like 8,000 K per bucket. So I mean, you're making like I can't even tell you how many folds. Yeah, see right there, 8,192 K per cell, so per bucket. What's coming out of here, and it makes like a bucket a tick. So the what you're putting in there takes no time to come back whatsoever. Again, another one, you got your helium, and this one, see that one takes 60 mil to start, but then it's lower ticks. You're not spending as much, but it's going to take helium, which was a little uh, harder for me to obtain on my server because endstone dust, everyone went to the end and mined everything. So anyway, um, I'll show you another one here. You can also make a radium ore with the fusion reactor. Instead of uh, bringing out helium plasma for energy, you can put energy into this takes 100 million plus 32,000 per tick and you can make a radium ore so with the rural framium cell and lithium cells you can make a radium ore same thing platinum dust sheldonite ore or the ends chewed up on yours you can get some beryllium cells and wool frame again 100 million 32 and it'll make it platinum dust and it'd be the same thing but you'd be pumping items out of here so same sort of thing um, and then I chose to do one on each side. I noticed the one on my live server only puts out in this direction. I'm not sure why, but uh, I got two outputs here, and I just stuck uh, some stone down there. So that's redstone being put on this for the output lever. And again, here to a uh, quantum tank. There it is. That's the uh, helium plasma, which then you would have to make a uh, plasma generator. And it's as simple as putting the... Uh, helium into the plasma. I could have done it here, I guess. And then the smart thing to do would be to take these off of there and hook the uh, plasma generator up into them. So then your fusion reactor is taking care of the energy all by itself for itself. Right? So anyway, I put a lever on top here. You flip this on. These golden uh, circles light up. And I mean, if one lights up, they all do. There's no in the middle. And you can see my plasma starting to uh, come out. If I actually flip these off here quick they will actually store up into here and this holds quite a decent bit by itself so you've got 1600 over there nothing over there yet and yeah, it was all right so we got uh, 2600 over there and it fills up quite quickly 3600 goes up a thousand at a time so as long as you keep these down and then, yep, it fills up, so you can use your helium plasma to go from there. And uh, it, the turnout is massive. Like I said, if you just remember, liquid's going in the bottom, liquid's going in the top, which is the exact same as when you see it. It's really funny because uh, when you look at this nase, so you see uh, deuterium on the bottom and tritium on the top. It doesn't matter, and I put that in this video to show you that as long as it's one on one side of this uh, control, I just picture this as the control computer, and you got one liquid on this side and one on this side. So I got deuterium coming in the top and tritium in the bottom I, just to try it to see if it mattered, and it doesn't matter, but just got to make sure you're keeping those liquids separate, one on each side of the control cube. So anyway, um, I hope this helped out and cleared out for a lot of people. A lot of people were scared to try it because of the blast and stuff, but to be completely honest, it is pretty simplistic. The hardest part, I would say, is uh, getting the cells for the tritium and the deuterium, or the tritium and the helium. Like, it's... That part is um, really time efficient with the industrial centrifuges and the electrolyzers, and... Um, I guess putting the mats together on a live server for all of these blocks. That would be the hardest thing, I guess I would say. So anyway, I hope this uh, helped out for everybody. And if you have any uh, questions, feel free to leave a comment. And I can help you out with anything like that. Thanks.